Right now, new violence turning deadly in Egypt. Troops opening fire on supporters of the ousted president, Mohamed Morsi. We're told that it happened as they were marching towards a building where they believed Morsi was being held. The shootings coming after the Muslim Brotherhood called for a, quote, day of rejection to protest the military takeover this week. All of this raising concerns that the unrest could escalate. Lisa Daftari is a Mideast journalist and a Fox News contributor. And I guess this is what, this is what we were afraid of. This is absolutely what we were afraid of, what we expected. They weren't going to go down that easily. And you have to realize that they do have a large constituency. That's how they came to power to begin with. That's the why Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood. And that's exactly why that was what was predicted after the Arab Spring. We, had, we already had this. So it's a deja vu in so many ways where you have a, a, a revolution in Egypt. You had a political vacuum. And the Muslim Brotherhood, well-funded, well organized the only opposition at that time that had the ability and the following to take over i thought this was interesting yesterday there were reports circulating uh that arrest warrants uh had been uh, issued for some of the top leaders within the muslim brotherhood and then last night late last night uh an army or military spokesperson went on to facebook and said no we're not doing that we are not right. planning to arrest anybody uh without cause and you have to understand the military's job here is just so sensitive and the way that they approach uh the crackdown against the muslim brotherhood is, is going to be entirely sensitive it's going to really pave the path for the for years to come because on the one hand if they go too soft Egypt will be in perpetual revolutionary mode. They'll come out onto the streets. They'll do what they'll do. They'll, they'll continue doing what they're right. doing because they'll, they'll get away with it. And if they go too hard on them, it's going to be, you know, a greater vengeance, and and and, and they're going to come out with greater violence. But we, we've we've talked to analysts who have said that you've got to bring the Muslim Brotherhood into the fold somehow. Right. You know, give them some sort of sense that they're going to be a part of the process going forward. Right. And they, but how do you do that after you've just ousted one of their own? Right. There's just too many of them not to include them to the equation because this is what you're going to have. What we're watching today is going to, again, they're going to come out, they're going to use violence as they have in the past. The Muslim Brotherhood did not sprout up two years ago. They've been around for over 50 years and they know exactly how to get into power and they have the tools to do so. So we have to, you know, the, the interim president made, made a, a statement that he, he wants to have something entirely inclusive to include. And you know what? The people coming out into the streets demonstrated something very, very important going forward, that this is a, a very diverse patchwork of Egyptian people people, young, old, women, men, uh, they're coming out into the streets and that entire demographic has to be um, represented, not just one small constituency. Uh, and the U.S., a uh, tricky situation because obviously we want to support uh, those uh, leaders that are democratically elected, but uh, there are probably a lot of people within the Obama administration at the State Department who are pretty psyched that Morsi's gone. Right, because look, he was democratically elected, but he wasn't democratically behaving. So we have to make that, that distinction here. And really the most important thing going forward is for Egypt to find a leader and to find the support system, whether it comes from the U.S. and, and, and its allies, but mostly from within to really resurrect its economy. Revolutions don't happen because people are having these lofty dreams about democracy. They happen because people are hungry, they need jobs, and the economy in Egypt, if the Muslim Brotherhood or Morsi had, had, had been able to fix the economy to a certain degree, I think we would have seen less of, 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 of this movement to come out and onto the streets. So it's about the economy, it's about hunger, and that's really what's going to be most important. So moving forward, looking for a leader. They've got an interim president who's in place until they're able to, to call elections. But you know uh, the leaders there. You know the players in Egypt. Is there somebody that might be acceptable to everybody? that right. could come and, in and, and especially be acceptable to the U.S. Right, and that's the challenge going forward. But one of the things that I've always suggested going forward, instead of just writing the, the checks to a spoiled child and giving them their allowance, maybe that's what we should be putting our money towards, finding a viable opposition, finding a government that's going to be answering the, the, the calls of the Egyptian people, but also being a transparent government that the U.S. and the allies could work with, because that's why the aid was established to begin with. Great analysis, as always, from Lisa Daftari, who's a Mideast journalist and a Fox News Channel contributor. Lisa, good to see you. Good Thanks to see so you. much. Arthel.